Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and welcome to part 2 of USB to SPI. I'm using the MCP2210 and the part 1 of this video, the link is on the top left or top right. Alright, and then the first part we basically designed the whole uh, USB to SPI module through Altium and through a PCB design tool and we fabricated the board. In this part, uh, I'm going to go a little further. We're going to fabricate the board, which I've already fabricated, and we're going to test and see how usable it is and how convenient it is uh, in order for us to prototype, say, other devices that uses the SPI communication protocol. All right. So let's glimpse through what the module was and what the diagram, uh, what the schematic looks like. So I'm using the MCP2210. It's the USB to SPI uh, converter. Uh, and you plug it into your laptop or your computer and it should automatically detect. At least that's what microchip um, uh, tells us. It has eight GPI, GP, uh, general purpose input output pins, which can be used as a, a slave select. And then you have the SPI protocol um, wires. That is the clock, the MISO's master and slave out, master out, slave in, and the reset. reset. In. And then you have this, and you can basically configure the GPIO to do chip select or do a normal GPIO pin. This is the top view. Uh, it's a two-layer PCB, and uh, this is the USB uh, connection connected to the uh, MCP two two one zero, and 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 this is the output. Yeah, so this is how the three D model looked like, and here we have it. So what you have on the screen right now is uh, this particular chip that I've basically uh, fabricated. I'm trying to get the alignment right, yeah. And yeah, it's uh, so far it looks so good. It's simple, it's small, it's a very small form factor, which means that I can directly plug it into my laptop and it should work. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is plug it into my system and let's see how it goes. So in order to get this working, you would need to go to the microchip document page, 2210, and there are two basic uh, utilities that you can download. One is the MPC2210 utility, which looks like um, which looks like this once you install it. Uh, it's a very lightweight application and it allows you to configure the SPI uh, protocol. And as soon as you plug it in, you can see it says connected. So if you're not getting the connection, that means you have either, a, you know, your connection is not working, um, you're not soldered the component properly or you have a faulty device. So in this particular case, I was able to connect and it says connected. Another utility that they have is called the uh, command line interface, which I have over here. And this is an SPI terminal where I can basically directly send data directly to the command in terms of, you know, this is my transfer data and I can receive data and I can set, you know, whether I want my general purpose input output to be a chip select or I want it to be a just a, you know, logic level high or logic level low. And here are other different modes that I can set, which is the bit rate, the SPI mode, the number of bytes I want to transfer, in this case is four bytes, and the data to data delay. Here I put 100 microseconds, and we'll play around with these parameters and see how it works. So before we do anything, so I got my logic analyzer right now set. I'm going to minimize everything. And let's get started. Just making sure that... All right. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to another screen and I'm going to click trigger the um, the data reading. So as you can see, we have something that is low over here because I've basically connected this to logic level low. Let's connect this to logic level high. And what we'll do is uh, and send four bytes and let's click transfer SPI. And there you can see it, you can transfer SPI. So that's really convenient. If you want to basically prototype a protocol, this is there's no other better way to do this. Um, you know, uh, it's really a convenient way. So there you can see the clock, and there's a delay between each clock cycle because I've set it to 100. What if I set it to like say 10 microseconds? All right, so I can send it to 10 microseconds, and then you can see that this will this gap will be right now it was 100 um, uh, microseconds before which is around, uh, you know, 10 milliseconds. And now let's redo this again. So when I basically trigger it again, I'm gonna basically click transfer data and 
yeah, we recorded some information. And here we can see it's now one microsecond, a millisecond. All right, so that's basically equivalent to 10 uh, microseconds. All right, and the data that I'm said that I'm sending out is you know uh, zero to zero x twenty two. This is not an x mode. Um, this is uh, z thirty two, and this is uh, forty four. And the last bit is zero, so the data. So as you can see, it's pretty convenient in order for me to you know interface with any pro any device that I want. And I've also just fabricated the. Uh, ADS 1234 which is um, a 24 bit analog digital, digital converter uh, which I have over here and I'm pretty excited to now interface this SPI with this particular protocol I've got all the wires all around set um, so I'm um, this will be another video but as you can see that this particular device um, is a really handy tool if I if you want to um, if you want to communicate with other peripheral devices that just need clock and data as in the case of the ADS1234 it just requires a clock and it needs data uh, it's not does not have a necessary a fixed protocol it's not I square C because there's no address that you need to configure you just need you know these two things and uh, this particular inter, um, chip can do that for you so those SPI you can use it for um, you know uh, you can use it for anything that requires a clock and a data data line basically I will be prototyping it to see how it works. Now, now there's one thing to keep in note with what I've designed. It is mostly it's uh, completely five volts. So if I look at the let's look at the schematic again, uh, the USB port is going to be five volts. So everything is going to be five volts. So my signal is going to be five volts. If you want it to be three point three volts, we would need to have um, you know a level shifter to come to, you know to step it. To step it from you know five volts to level it from five volts to three point three volts. So that's uh, one little um, thing that you may need to consider if you use if you design it this way. Um, the way SPI has done it or the way Microchip has done it, um, they have a way to toggle between three point three volts and five volts so in the design itself. I don't want it to in my when I in my use case I wanted to have the level shifter as another chip altogether or on another component altogether, so that it would be. Uh, I didn't want it to, you know, put uh, make the design and logic too complicated. But now that I think about it, uh, I might have gone that way. Maybe in the future it, revisions in design, I might be able to make it, you know, 3.3 volts and 2.5 volts. Oh, uh, sorry, and 5 volts. But for now, I think it's uh, it works for me. So as you can see, um, yeah, it's a very handy tool. Uh, yeah, and if this is something that you want, I would probably um, advise you to make your own. Or if you want to purchase it directly from the microchip website, highly recommend you do that. And if you think, and if you want to support this channel, you could. And if you think that these are the kind of components uh, um, you wouldn't mind buying from me, um, I'm not. I'm not really thought about selling these things at all. But if there's enough interest, then you know I will probably make it into a fabrication, uh, make it into a production uh, design, so that you know I can clean it up and you know and make it work for uh, the broader audience and test it properly. Uh, but I haven't gone that route yet. Uh, but if that's something there's enough interest then maybe I would you know try to sell these components as well but for now if you want to make your own it's so easy to make your own that you know it's you that's the best uh, that's the recommended way to go about doing it all right uh, thank you all and if you really enjoyed this I uh, highly recommend you subscribe to my channel or like this video and uh, if you like these kind of videos there'll be more coming where I take down a chip that is necessary or a protocol or a component that I feel is necessary in order for me to you know prototype things very quickly I'll probably design it, fabricate it, and then test it with you know the peripheral devices. All right, and if that's something that you like, uh, comment below. You know it really helps the channel. And thanks you all once again.